The Ancient Gods Part 2 just released, wrapping up the modern Doom saga that started with Doom 2016. Although it was released as a DLC for Eternal, it does feel like more of a third game because of how it concludes the Doom Slayer story. Both parts are an expansion, but instead of just newer levels and arenas, they introduce new enemies, new mechanics, even new weapons. And while they both fall under the name of Ancient Gods, both parts are considerably different than the other, so today I'll be reviewing them both. I have a very unique experience with both of them, as I waited until Part 2 was just about to release before I even touched Part 1, and I only finished Part 1 literally hours before Part 2 was even available. So, I was able to do a blind playthrough in both before mechanics were tuned with the latter's releases, which is important when reviewing them as two separate pieces. We'll start chronologically with Part 1. Now, just to preface this part, I feel it's necessary to give my background as a Doom player. I love the game, I love that it's a single player first person shooter with a high skill ceiling, and I think it has an incredibly fun and addicting combat loop. I've played through the main story and the Super Gorness Master level on Nightmare. I enjoy the challenge the game presents, but I do not consider myself to be a great or even good player by any means. I feel I fall on the more casual end of the spectrum, which I think is important for everyone to know when I explain my reason for disliking certain things presented in this DLC. I say that because the main thing I will be complaining about in this part is the difficulty increase. UAC Atlantica I thought was a fantastic level with tight industrial arenas reminiscent of Doom 2016, a challenge that was immediately felt but never overwhelming, and decent platforming sections that I thought were good for pacing. Blood Swamps on the other hand introduces the spirit, which I think is pretty infamous among Doom players. More on him and the other enemies later. A few platforming sections now put you on a timer as gas fills the room, somewhat ruining the pacing aspect of them, and it ends in a boss fight which I actually think wasn't that bad. The Holt is the final level of this DLC, and I thought people were exaggerating when they said that it was harder than the Super Gornis Master level, but they really weren't. Another enemy that is not really liked is introduced, the Bloodmaker. There's a Slayer Gate that made me want to rip my hair out, and it sort of compounds all the problems with the way this DLC goes about increasing the difficulty in the game, which I'll get into now. In my opinion, the way this DLC goes about increasing difficulty is similar to the way Dark Souls 2 went about increasing difficulty in its respective series. That is, it put too much stuff on screen for you to deal with properly. I think new enemies are the biggest reason I felt this. In Video Game Donkey's review of Doom Eternal, he says, Where enemies are tankier, and when you do that, you risk making your guns and the player feel weak. Donkey goes on to say that the weapons still feel powerful because as you shoot the demon, pieces of it will be blown off as it takes damage. The spirit ignores this sentiment and turns most things that he possesses into a Destiny 2 bullet sponge boss fight. They make demons faster and stronger, they take reduced damage, weak points are off the table, and you can't even freeze him to buy yourself some space. Even if you do kill them, you have to Ghostbusters microwave capture them, or you'll risk having to fight another possessed enemy. The Bloodmaker is easier to deal with, but they're a bad case of hurry up and wait, where they're an enemy you really want to focus on, but you don't know when exactly they're going to expose their weak spot, so you'll often die waiting for it, or turn your attention to something else and miss your opportunity. The two enemies introduced in Part 1 just don't work very well here. They're both high-level threats you want to prioritize getting off the field, but you really can't because of what it takes to kill them. I'm not saying they can't work, they really can, and there's good intentions behind them that I'll get into later, but the way they're integrated into Part 1's arenas make them feel more frustrating to fight against than satisfying. Overall, I was turned off in Part 1. I was more bitter than I was happy when I overcame certain parts I got stuck on, and I felt like I needed to turn the difficulty down. I didn't, and was able to beat it on Nightmare, but going into Part 2, I was worried that I'd get my ass kicked so hard that I'd have no choice but to go down to ultraviolence. And now that I've said my piece, let's get on to Part 2. Now, I know I sounded pretty harsh in Part 1. Despite all that critique, I still enjoyed it, because, I mean, it's Doom after all. But Part 2? Part 2, I think, is incredible. Where Part 1 goes about difficulty like Dark Souls 2, Part 2 goes about difficulty like Dark Souls 3. Enemies and encounters are tougher and harder, new enemy types are introduced that require you to change up your gameplay, but the encounters are tuned well enough so that once you figure out the combat puzzle aspect to it, it feels like you can overcome it with confidence. New enemies offer more options to how you deal with them. You can full auto shotgun stone imps, hit them with a hammer, or chainsaw them. You can shoot the armored baron's armor off with one shot if you got good aim, or you can shoot him with plasma rifle until it breaks like me. Screecher zombies force you to refrain from using explosives and be more precise with your shots, but if you can do that, there's not really much they can do. Compare this to the spirit, where you have to just shoot it with underpowered weapons until it dies, or wait for the Bloodmaker's weak spot to show itself, and it's clear that the new enemies in Part 2 give you much more freedom in how you tackle the encounters. The only enemy that doesn't really fit into this category is the Cursed Prowler. He is an enemy that could have easily become very obnoxious, but the team at id restrained themselves, thankfully, and limited each encounter with him to only having one at a time, so that he becomes more of a needle in a haystack that you need to find and eliminate, rather than a constant threat to your movement. And remember when I said the Spirit and Bloodmaker were enemies that could work despite their flaws? 
and part two, the encounters with them are much, much more manageable. Spirits are more easily isolated and present more of a mini-boss type encounter, and Bloodmakers don't appear in groups of three anymore, and getting hit by one of their attacks isn't an immediate death sentence because of how arenas are populated. The only big complaint I have about part two is the final boss. Given how much Hugo talks about mastering skills and becoming a black belt with the game's mechanics, I expected the fight to be one that requires you to combine all the skills you learned over the course of the game in order to defeat him. Weak points, freezes, hookshot movement, blood punches, maybe even quick switching. But instead, we got what was basically a glorified Marauder fight that felt like it went on a little too long. But despite this flaw, I still think that part 2 was, all in all, a great experience. What I'm trying to say here is that in part 2 you have options with how to deal with the situations the developers present. The encounters are designed so that you can deal with threats that you deem important without getting punished too hard for leaving certain ones on the board. It comes across as easier than the last DLC, but personally I think that this is for the better. Since this is likely the last piece of Doom Eternal anything we're going to get in a while, at least story-wise, it's better to go out with a bang rather than the taste of salt. Overall both DLCs are certainly worth playing, but I can say confidently that I had a better time with Part 2 than Part 1. Part 1 may have gotten me a little salty, but regardless it's still made with care and it's still the Doom Eternal we all know and love. I've heard that it's been toned down with the newest patch, and I haven't played that version yet so this review only covers it as it was. But again, I'm not an elite player that can speedrun on Ultra Nightmare, so this was more from a casual player's perspective. But that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed the content, leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. And if you want to see live gameplay, consider following me on Twitch. I've started streaming a lot and I'm trying to grow my community. It's Nico underscore VZ if you're interested, and I hope I see some of you there. Until then though, this is goodbye.